be luckily. Um, we're not really going to be talking to you about anything that is too uh, WordPress specific today. This is more of a content based talk about podcasting. And the first thing I want to find out is how many people here have a podcast? Okay. How many people who have a podcast, you keep your hands up. How many people who have a podcast have done more than 10 episodes? Yeah, Rick, you put your hand down. I know. How many of you have been podcasting for over a year? Wow. Has anyone been podcasting for two years? Okay, put your hands back up. One year, people. Keep your hands up. Are there people here that would like to have a podcast? Okay, I want you guys now put your hands down, but the podcasters keep your hand up. Look at the <laughs> look at the three people who've been podcasting for over a year. Don't look at Mike and I, and talk to them because if they've been podcasting for over a year, they're doing something right. Podcasts are harder to keep going than blogs are. You may not put your hands down, um, but you should introduce yourself. So you know, out in the audience, say hello to your neighbor. It's like church. Meet the other podcasters. Podcast, I'll give you a minute. Go ahead. Say hi to the podcasters. It's not like the zoo. You can feed them too. Well, that was that was short. You can't hear me. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you turn up my mic? Yeah, I'm turning. It doesn't matter because. I'm about to move past the, uh, the podcasting talking segment uh, and, and hand this over to Dr. Normal for a moment. Are we doing that? Yeah. Are we doing the movie now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay I don't know how to control the uh, audio over there. We can hear and hear, so. Oh, okay. So, uh, because we... Um, because we don't get up and speak live, what we do is we do videos and audios on the internet, we figured we would uh, do that. Now, unfortunately, we, we couldn't fill up the whole time. <laughs> Unfortunately for us, but... Uh, um, so we've got about six minutes, um, and this is kind of what we're about, what we've been doing for two years, and how we got from when we, where we started to where we're at today. So if all the technical <laughs> stuff works. <laughs> And we will have a quiz, as Cami says. And we'll probably be referring back to this. I'm doing my own tech, of course. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the 2007 Chaos Holiday Lyric Contest. So yeah, this is the first ever three Chaos family member podcast Christmas extravaganza. Hi everybody and welcome. We're joined, as always, by Mr. Chaos, everybody. Hello. And my very, very special doppelganger guest, Ms. Cammie Kelson. Hi all. That I'm joined on my birthday by my lovely, lovely blog wife, Holly. Hi. Sybil Law. Hey, Sybil. Hello. And my husband, Mike, the man of many names. And Megatron. And Megatron. <laughs> Am I allowed to talk yet? <laughs> You're allowed to talk now. My friend, Martin. Hello. Miss Burroughs. Delightful, too. Hi, Gunfighter. Hi, Cammie. Hi, Dr. Norma. How are you? Hello. I'm Joe Befoy. You know, I almost feel like I'm listening to a very hip national public radio or something, you know? So, do you want to tell us what Toonlet is? It's just free software tools, online tools that let anybody make their own webcomic web comic blog, um, regardless of their artistic ability. You could be like, Holodal. Wow. But if you were, you know, trying to be more authentic, it would be something more like, Holodal. <laughs> um, basically, Podcaster is an iPhone web app, and uh, I created it for uh, being, you know, so I was able to stream some of my favorite podcasts to my iPhone without having to sync with iTunes. And this week's guest is the one and only Aaron Hockley. And thank goodness there's only one. <laughs> we decided to have him come on the show to talk to all of you about WordCamp Portland. What you're saying is I could be a Twitter whore and a friend feed snob and everything would be okay. Yep. I'm going to try it. It's fun. All right. Yeah. I think we need to talk about why you're obsessed with unicorns instead of Pegasus. Uh, instead of what? Instead of a Pegasus. 
Uh, it wasn't what you said. It, uh, what, unicorns or what? Why are you obsessed with unicorns instead of Pegasus? There's no audio or video going on Eastern right now. Yeah, you're, you've dropped. Are we that. totally screwed? Yeah, it's just playing that old one where you got the Crocs up on the <laughs> table. It was too good when nothing happened at the beginning, like when everything was really smooth. Sweet! So. I don't mean to be antagonistic. I just mean to say that it's really hard to say Pegasus. This is horrible. I'm trying to get her to say Pegasus. 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 Is it time? It's sure. time. On tech, we're bringing out the whiteboard. So Twitter says, okay, well, let me check with Candy Chaos. Shouldn't there be a little arrow that goes? Yeah, I suppose there probably should. Okay, hang on here. Eat it. Absolutely, Cammy. Okay. <laughs> Camera guy, are you with him? You <laughs> tap on the side, and then when I'm in review mode, I can scroll through the pictures as well, just by tapping on the left, tapping on the right, and then confirming up above. He has an awesome little blinky light. What is it doing? It's sending a message. What is the message? I can't say. You have to, oh, uh, brilliant. that's uh, for you to uh, study and find out. Morse code? It is Morse code. I was lucky enough to be in the group with Jack Dorsey, the inventor of Twitter, mm -hmm. when he described the idea for the first time. And he talked about a service that would keep us connected no matter where we were and, uh, and share the status of, of what we were doing, wherever we were. Me, all the buttons, all the work. Oh, this is my iPhone running the show. Running the show. So it's naked women, Star Wars figures, and prostates. I think that's a, that's a podcast if I ever heard one. But don't want to see how the sausage was made, people. Yeah. Not no. all of it. I like sausage. <laughs> I'd like to continue to have the sausage. Okie dokie. <laughs> get right on that. Can I dominate Google search for day 2692? Ba ba da ba ba. <laughs> she presently looks like a Jawa. <laughs> I commend you all to uh, come and come and see this. One at a time, please. What the fuck is a whoopee? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it is a kind of a fun, uh, kind of strange word. And the fryer was turned on, and I walked over with the fryer, and I was like, you know what I mean? This is what we're gonna do. <laughs> I drove the thing in the fryer, and he's like, I don't think this is a good idea. <laughs> and I was like, we had eaten like a whole, you know, at that point we had eaten a whole bunch with his staff. It's the keynote on making stuff. It is on yeah. making stuff. Yeah. I haven't really been that much of a maker myself, so I felt kind of like a fraud, you know? Do any of the others use hashtags to make um, their point? <laughs> not as much. Shows like Strange Love Live and the community that you guys build with people tuning in live to watch and chat. Our current guest, Will Norris. Yeah, okay. Um, Will Norris actually has no affiliation with Sandboard Cam whatsoever. <laughs> this is, this is my cam. That's, well, you have a bar, see? It's There's a bar here? Josh, you're supposed to be wearing the helmet cam. Whoa. That's a helmet cam yeah, foul. Yeah, but then All we right. might have to get some uncomfortable closeness going well, on. Well, then he can say, hey, that's I my... have to work with this guy. It's, a whole, new, it's a whole new thing. Yeah, Apparently come on, professionals man. are not often asked to turn the camera on themselves, on their forearms. <laughs> Strange Love Live is the best place to meet tech personalities in Portland without actually meeting them. So watch it Friday nights at 8 or 9. Okay. before my eyes at this particular point, it would look something like that. <laughs> um, but what you saw in that slide was what Dr. Normal, and if I call him Mike, you'll have to forgive me because uh, that's his nickname, Mike. Dr. Normal is his birth name. <laughs> <clears throat> that's what Mike and I do every week. 
Every Friday night, we go down into our studio, we record a show, and this microphone and I are not getting along very well. You stand over there. I've been kicked away from the podium. So that's what we've been doing, and if you are looking to do a podcast, I'm not telling you that this is the formula that you should follow, because it's worked for us, because it's worked for us. It doesn't work for everyone, but there are some things that I think we've learned in our two years uh, that we've progressed really don't like the microphone um that we've progressed and that we've learned and if you saw the beginning of the video it was audio and it wasn't always the best audio and we were talking to bloggers that i knew on the internet until we kind of stumbled upon uh, craig from tunlin that was our first tech episode and it was kind of an epiphany for us and we said wow maybe we should be doing something more specific and more centered maybe we should be looking at the portland mm -hmm. tech community just keep it close to your mouth. Apparently, I have to make love to the microphone. Yeah. So uh, we made the transition, we made the shift, and then there were people who wanted to see what was going on, so we started live streaming. And now every Friday night at 10 o'clock-ish, we stream our show because that's the format that works for us. Uh, and even more than that, it was the community. And in our community, we have a lot of really smart, savvy people. We don't always understand exactly what they're talking about until we give them a forum to do so. So we have people on the show to come and talk about a really specific topic. And then once that's exhausted and they've talked about it and they've been entertaining on something incredibly technical about you know how to write code for the, the Android phone, which is not something I can do, we ask them about other things that they love to do, like riding bicycles, uh, going to Burning Man why they have a, a search column set up for unicorn or how they killed their chickens <laughs> um, do you want this one yeah don't try no, this one okay. yeah oh, okay. no i don't want to switch in the middle okay. um, but there's more to the community than just the people that you're talking to when you start to work in the community you start to realize that you can't just like pick people out of the community and say hey talk to me you have to actually get involved. So whatever community you're podcasting from, it's something that you should be involved with. So you should go to conferences, you should go to meetups, um, you should get to sit in the top of the hill and just right over there <laughs> and, and look at stuff. This is my second year at WordCamp, this is his first year at WordCamp. Uh, but these are all things that we tried to catch up on and tried to do, and even things that are on the fringe of the community, like the Get Naked for a Cause calendar, was raising money. You can switch it now. It's okay. Go ahead. Yeah. It was raising money for some tech charities and some good causes. So we had this picture, and I have it up here. Dr. Normal doesn't think it fits, but Aaron Hockley took it, and he's at WordCamp, and it was for the tech community. You can... It's okay. You can switch it. Um, yeah, <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. I just don't want to look at myself anymore. So you take the you take the guests that you can get, and you take people. You take risks because you're never sure who's going to bring what. But you pull them all from the community that you're working in, and you get involved as much as you can. But you have to notice that limits. If you're a podcaster, this is one of the few ways that you're like traditional media. You can't get involved in all of the drama. There is drama in any community, and it breeds on Twitter, and it breeds in blogs, and it breeds in chat rooms, and you have to learn a certain, you know, to keep that to yourself and to say, hey, I don't want to go there. I, I can't get on everybody's bad side. I can't be on everybody's good side. I'm just going to have to go ahead and be myself now. Did you take away my notes for a no. reason? Oh. Is that why you're over here? I'm not talking why are you well, standing no, because that's, I'm, I'm uncomfortable over there. I'm married to him, so this bickering is part of the package. It's kind of how it goes. Can I go stand over there? But I'm, you, I need you can to, go away. I need to be at the slides. This is uncomfortable. We're never this close. <laughs> <laughs> this is unnatural. This really plays into my last, uh, last point on the uh, working in the community, and it's the working. You have to work hard and you have to be involved in your community, but there comes a certain point where you have to say no. People will expect you to be doing things. And if you have a personal life, do any of you have a personal life? No? Oh, oh I see some ladies back there that have a personal life. No. Um, if you have a personal life, you have, to, you have to kind of keep that safe because you know the name of the talk was Bondage, How to Be Your Podcasts. Mm -hmm. Dom and not as sub. I have all sorts of copy names. Um, how to be in control of it, and I didn't mention that earlier, but it was on the slide. 
So you have to be able to say no. You have to be able to say, hey, no, I have a life too. And in our case, uh, I have a husband and a child, and I also enjoy writing, and I do volunteer work in a completely different community. So you have to be able to say, hey, this, this is, comes first. This is important too. And that leads into working hard, which is something that I don't really believe in doing. So I'm going to let Dr. Normal talk to you. Go back over there. I'll go away. Here. Here. Go take your mic. I'm going to try this one. Oh, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll try He's it out. Try the other we'll, it's oh. on. Oh, God. Oh, you have to turn down the yeah. Why don't you give me the mic? Okay. Yeah, that one. Here we go. Okay. I thought so. I know. Okay. 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 Here. Okay. 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 So, um, about working in the community, which was the last slide, um, in media, and in big media, you, you've got to remember to focus on those projects that big media doesn't have an attention span or a time to think about. I mean, if you're you know, doing TV and radio, there's a certain finite attention span there. And we have an opportunity as podcasters, as doing our own thing on the net, to focus as long and as deep as we want to into um, into projects and into personalities and people that wouldn't naturally get a voice um, to find out more. And I think that that's you know one of the key pieces when we look at um, what we do on the net versus what radio or television or print even does. Just similar to what you guys do as bloggers as well. You have you have a forum. You have an opportunity. To, uh, to really investigate a subject. So that was just one of the, the points of working in the community and highlighting those things that don't get highlighted. Um, as far as working hard, uh, we, we work hard um, at this. Um, sometimes I just want to take a weekend off. Um, one of the points of asking about people who have podcasts is like blogging. Um, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, if you're a writer and a blogger, you go and you write and you blog and you blog consistently and you keep writing and improving. Um, podcasting is exactly the same thing. If you have a blog and you're posting there every six months, it, probably not a whole lot of people are going to go there unless there's some reason why they're going to go there. Um, if you're podcasting and you release a podcast once every six months, um, great but you know you got to be consistent I mean that's that's the one thing you got to bring content to people and have them come back whether it's each week every couple weeks whatever your schedule is every day um, that's what they're expecting and um, that's the hard work part of doing this you know it's writing is hard work uh, creating audio creating video is is hard work as well um, just like writing and blogging, um, you, you, you write and you share with your readers and you improve your writing and you get feedback. Uh, the same with multimedia, the same with audio, uh, video. As you saw in, the, in, the, in our little video reel, we started as an audio podcast. Um, you know, I didn't think two years ago that we would have four cameras and graphics and lights and go to open source bridge and web visions and interview you know guest speakers and all of that you know it evolved over time from doing audio to video and it evolved with keeping an eye on improvement so you know the first podcast or two that we posted in audio, it was like, I would listen to the whole thing start to finish and, tr and say, okay, what don't I like about this audio? What do I want to improve and how to improve it? Now, working hard doesn't mean don't have fun. Um, we're all a pretty geeky audience here, I would think, or most of us are. So learn about the technology, learn about the tools, learn about audio tools and video. Uh, tools. What? How can you improve your video? Talk to other people who are doing it. You know, we've got three podcasters here, and um, hopefully, as we grow that community, you know, you get together. You say, "Hey, 
what do you, what do you do? I visited um, a podcaster that has a whole internet radio channel that just launched, and I said, "Hey, can I come over? I want to see your setup. I want to see what you're doing." You know, and we talk tech for a while, and you get ideas that way, going back and forth, and you share ideas, share what you're doing, technically. Um, I think. Toss to Cami, is that what this says? <laughs> no. um, experimentation, too, is very important. Um, you want to, again, working hard, being consistent, but that doesn't mean not having fun, not experimenting, not stretching yourself, and stretching yourself technically, right? If you're doing a, an audio podcast in a conference room, one-on-one -on -one with someone, and that's going well, why don't you take your rig to a, a conference or a seminar or a word camp or wherever and try to capture more people? You know, it's okay to stretch and it's okay to fail. No one's going to, you know, you're not going to, well, I don't know, depending on what your job is, <laughs> you're not going to lose your job or, you know, there's not going to be great ramifications. You're not going to lose money or anything if you fail. You're just going to learn and, and your audience will learn with you. So, toss the cami, quick. <laughs> you can change the slide too. So part of podcasting, part of any project, uh, sometimes is partnership. If you have a lot of work, if you're good at something and maybe someone else isn't so good at something, partnership is the way to go. And in our case, if it's technical, if there's a camera involved or some lights or some blinky lights or a microphone, uh, or something that I don't understand, it's Dr. Normal's job. That's what he does. But he doesn't book people for our show. He doesn't come up with show ideas, usually. And uh, never ask him to write a blog post. <laughs> ever, 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 ever. And that's how we put our content out. It's up on iTunes, but we also have a blog that we put it up on so that people can go there and they can find a little bit more about the episode and they can get their links and all the information. He doesn't do that. You do. I do. Yeah, I do that. That's my thing. So sometimes two heads are better than one, and sometimes it's like that chicken on the last slide. That was my chicken when I was a kid. I just, you know, I needed a chicken slide. Oh, look, look, there it is. That's Hussy. This is Hussy, and that's Mom. They were not smart. Um, and sometimes it goes past what even you and your partner can do, and that's when you kind of have to go and, and get help. You can hire people to do things. You can ask people to do things. But you have to be careful, just like having a, a guest poster on your blog, you have to make it clear how people are, are involved and not give them too much leeway because sometimes people get really excited about the project and then they think that it's their project too. And you need to have clear, clear definitions, clearly defined where that is because it's fantastic to have people working with you as long as they know that it's still your show, it's still your idea, it's still your content. Next one. Next one. Oh. <laughs> Dr. Normal was the only slide. This is his favorite slide because we're going to do something fun. Who has coffee? Does anyone have coffee? Who has coffee? Just, I need to know. Oh, Put okay. that coffee no, you're down. you're stepping oh, all I'm over sorry. my lines. I, th I thought I got to do that no, part. No, so in sales, it's ABCs. Always be closing. But in podcasting, it's A, B, E. Always be entertaining. Jeffrey, you put that coffee down. That coffee is for entertainers only. You can't have the Glen Mary leads. Um, no, that's why he was excited. I was excited because I wanted to put the embarrassing picture of Rick up because the other podcast that we do, uh, I do with Rick. And if I have a chance to make him look like he's being manhandled by my husband, I will. Is bondage. It is bond. Yeah, look, he's binding Rick. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Being entertaining is an important part. Even if it's an informative show, even if it's something uh, that's supposed to be really, really technical, people don't want to listen for very long unless you do something to entertain them and engage their attention. And and now I'm going to let Dr. Normal talk to you about that. Is there Sounds like more work. Another slide. Oh, yeah. Um, so I think the point here is... Um, no matter what you're presenting, no matter what your subject is, um, it, you know, it, like when we started 
talking to bloggers, um, and then what we found is when we moved into tech, um, moving into tech is kind of tough. You might get into some very deep discussions about the project, about what's going on, and you gotta remember attention span of your audience. So like I said, you have the leeway to go as far as you need to in, in uh, podcasting, unlike traditional media, but at the same time, you, you do need to think of the people on the other end who are listening to this or watching this, and you need to focus on kind of, you know, how do I present this in a, in a, in a kind of an entertaining way, so to speak. A good example, and the reason we showed you that little commercial video at the beginning is there's several examples that I picked out of our couple of years of audio and video. Um, you saw John Nastos there, who was graciously let us borrow his music. Um, Wave. He's a <laughs> and he's a professional musician and also uh, a, a coder and has several websites and, and and lots of cool projects. And at the beginning there, he had a very very complicated discussion about OAuth, and you know we were trying to figure out well. If we just talk about this, it, it's going to be very difficult. We're going to need some video or some visual cues. So I've seen a lot of these chalk talk whiteboard um, talks that you can get on webinars. So I'm like, well, let's just pull out the whiteboard. We've never done that before. Let's just go ahead and bring out the whiteboard and, and experiment with it and let him do his talk. And then we let him play his saxophone afterwards. So it all worked out, always being entertaining and informative. Oh, do I get the interaction part? Yeah. Okay, um, so the question is, which should be up here on the slide, um, why isn't anyone commenting on my podcast? Why isn't anyone commenting? So we, and like most podcasters, have your WordPress blog set up, you're using PodPress or some other service, um, linking to Blip TV, what we do on, for the video side, and um, you put up a post, and there's just no comments. So your other blog posts, your writing, you might see a lot of comments. I've seen this on multiple uh, blog sites. And then they start doing a podcast, the podcast post goes up, zero comments. You do your WordPress, you know, your blog post, lots of comments. So um, I'm not sure why people don't comment on podcast posts on a blog, but I will tell you that what I've seen, what we've seen as far as our content is there's a lot more interaction via Twitter, via chat room, more of a real-time interaction. Uh, a comment to a blog post is, you know, can be pretty static, uh, but if you have real-time, people are posting tweets while you're podcasting or while they're watching or live streaming, um, and you know, if you're doing a chat room at the same time, um, there's a lot of interaction there. So that may be killing the comments to post. So if you're out there, hang on. <laughs> if you're out there um, and you're starting a podcast and you're doing a post, think of these other ways to interact via Twitter, via chat room, as opposed to comments. But it brings up an interesting point about the interaction while you're actually doing the podcasting. Dr. Normal is behind, no, and yeah, you're early. Dr. Normal is behind the computer, he's behind the scenes. He's not on camera, he's not on audio the entire time, so he can interact at the extent that he can. Early in the show, I used to sit with my laptop on my lap and talk to people on Twitter and in the chat room, and we found out that that's not very compelling podcasting. Oh, she's reading Twitter, and she's not even paying attention to the person she's talking to. And it's not just my bad manners, but I was just engrossed in things people were saying about the show. So that's an important, you need to know what people are saying, because sometimes the real time aspect of it is very important to people, but you have to pay attention to what you're doing. Now you can talk about how you guys. Oh, me again? Okay. Well, we're doing good on time here. Um, yeah, don't feed the trolls. So um, as, you're, uh, as you're going through and you have a chat room, just, just a little story. 
we found a very big hole in the live streaming provider that we use. All live streaming providers have a, a, some type of a chat room, and ours happens to have a very um, unsecure chat room. You can basically just constantly attach, change your name, and and do whatever you need to do. So around this summertime, school's out, you know, kids are on the computer, um, and you start getting these people who are connecting up and posting, you know, all sorts of fun things in the chat room. Um, and you just, at some point, it gets so bad that you have to shut it down. Uh, there are alternatives, um, but we, we kind of bring that out to just be aware of that. that the technology hasn't completely solved this problem. And I say that because, again, talking to um, one or two other pod podcasters, they've had similar problems, and no one's got a complete solution. There's other solutions. We've used third-party solutions, things like Tiny Chat, uh, which you go off-site to another chat room. There's all kinds of IRC-based things. But um, it's just you will have to figure out a way as you're doing something live and as it becomes popular and people might come in and start spamming and trolling the live chat, how to deal with that, you know, kind of how you're going to handle that. The, the, bad, the downside is that it kind of, um, it ends up really pushing the rest of the people who are there away. And so you've got to balance how you take care of that versus Versus, um, versus getting rid of these people or calming them down. Okay, we're going to come to my least favorite part of the conversation. And we saved this for the end because I was not looking forward to it. Uh, I don't like personal branding. Uh, apparently I have a personal brand just because I exist and I breathe and I'm on Twitter and Facebook and personal brand is important, but you have to have some sort of personal branding if you want people to watch your podcast because you are your podcast and therefore your personal branding is also branding for your podcast. It's the same with blogging, it's the same with social media, it's the same with anything that you're going to do that's on the internet. You have to have personal branding. <coughs> the only other thing I want to say on this is when you choose a name, not for yourself, when you choose a name for your show, you should probably be careful. <laughs> the name of our show is Strange Love Live. I still don't know what I was thinking, but <laughs> we do mostly a tech show. We do a technology show, so sometimes we go, oh, well, it's Tech Love Live or it's Strange Love Live Tech Edition to try to clarify things, and we, we toyed with the idea of changing the name of our show, but then we decided it's been the name of our show for two years. I'm just going to live with the funny faces that people make. And I've learned to enjoy, oh, what's the name of your show? And I'm at my daughter's school talking to someone. When you do a podcast, what's it called? <laughs> Strange Old Live. <laughs> Is it a sex show? <laughs> uh, we had a sex episode. But now it's about technology. Sorry. I'm sorry to disappoint you. So be careful. Think about it. You know, you could suddenly be a bit podcasting superstar in a year, and, and you could have named your show Pink Bunnies. And it's about, you know, crocodiles, and it wouldn't make any sense. So be careful about that, please. I was just looking at always be entertainers, and I, was, I don't know what the heck I was writing over there on that whiteboard. I should have written it. <laughs> yes, I can't you trust should. you. I should have written I thought that was my part. Now this is your, you go. This is the whole partnership thing, by the way. This is how it works. It's like, are you doing that? No, is that me? This is also why I'm not the guy giving the Ignite presentations and wearing low-cut outfits and <laughs> stuff. Um, That's my job. He does the other all things. I, I have a Dr. Normal camera. Experiment. <laughs> experiment. There you go. Experiment. Yes. Um, I, I want to allow just a few minutes. We're wrapping up here for questions. Um, just a quick note, where is this all going? Do you have the answer? Because I don't. <laughs> um, it, we've got, you know, is internet killing broadcast. It sure kind of seemed that way earlier this year. But I'll tell you right now, I'm finding examples where that's not the case. Um, as a matter of fact, um, in a conversation with a, with a, 
another person who has a podcast. I said, when do you think the big media guys just come down on, on this medium and just dominate it? I mean, I think up to this point, NPR has, is some of the most popular podcasts. You know, it seems to fit their model up on iTunes. But we're seeing new things locally right now with uh, local TV stations uh, and now local radio. I think they all kind of looked at the newspaper business and saw what happened there and saw what happened with blogging and went, oh, guess what? What are these crazy kids doing over here? Um, I think what I'm seeing is 2009 has been kind of this shake out with the economy. I think 2010 we're going to see this thing take off. The live streaming thing has been taking off this year. We started doing that a year ago with Joe Christensen back there, live streaming media, who's streaming this whole thing. I don't think you'll go to an event without it being streamed live, even if it's someone with a laptop. Last year I did attend WordCamp Portland because Dale Chumley was streaming it on his laptop. And so I was able to watch some of what was going on. Um, that's the new model, to be able to be local, hyper-local, if you will, and to be able to put this on the net, to broadcast it, um, to, whereas it would just fall by the wayside, you wouldn't know it, it happened or existed. I think big media is picking up on that. And whereas we thought that they would change, try to reformat their broadcasts, there's only so much you can do in the broadcast medium. There's only, only so much you can do with um, television and radio. Um, just like there's only so much you can do with a printed newspaper. So you're seeing those folks go down, come down to, uh, go down, come down to our level. Um, join us crazy kids and start experimenting. So that's that's what we see, and I think we're going to see a lot more of it in 2010. That shouldn't be a barrier to all of you to get into this medium. Um, I think that uh, that's, you know, try it, experiment, you know. So we want to open it up to questions? First, you should say goodbye. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you guys so much. If anyone has questions, open it up. We got five minutes. Talking we got five though. minutes. So go ahead and do that side minutes questions, but I want to say something when you're all done. Okay. So does anyone have any podcasting related questions? Do you have a hot list of your basic equipment you use? Having done lots of tech. For audio or video. Okay. So if you want to know if there's a hot list of the equipment that we use on Strangify. You're from Seattle, right? Nope. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I got this other question. Um, n not really. Uh, the uh, I, I certainly can make it, quite frankly, because, you know, if you see the two years, it's evolved over time, right? Um, I had music gear and have a background in music, so obviously I started podcasting audio with stuff that I laid around, boards, mics, and then it's grown into video, and a lot of the stuff I've acquired in the last year has been video-related lighting and, and all of that, but it's easy for, for me to talk to. But basically, if you wanted to start a podcast tomorrow, what are five things you would need? Well, we could unconference that from journalism camp, can't we? We've got five minutes. Uh, okay. You know, a good a good webcam. Everyone's got good laptops now, so you have, you know, everyone's got Macs or good PCs. Um, they're all, you know, if you've got one that's that's recent in the last couple of years, you have all the horsepower you need uh, to do a podcast. I'd go out and get the best webcam you can get if you want to. Uh, if you want to do video, if you want to do audio, a good uh, maybe a good USB mic setup from one of the uh, professional mic vendors uh, like Shure or Audio Technica. Um, the other thing that's handy is they have these little portable digital recorders, the Zoom, and there are others. Uh, a lot of people use that. A lot of journalists use that, and you can just take stuff off an SD card and then post it to a podcast. Anybody else? Is it practical to 
podcast in like a wide aspect ratio? Are there tools? For oh, that good that question. Have? He wants to know if it's practical to podcast in a wide aspect ratio and if there are tools for that. Um, no. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's um, the wide ax aspect ratio has uh, come about, I'd say, in the last year in popularity. It's really kind of a personal choice. We do four by three, and that's because we started in four by three. And uh, if you've started in that format, shifting gears to 16.9, I think you need to think about that because you got to think about your target audience and how they're consuming uh, your content as well. Um, I, I know I've had discussions with Blaze Streaming Media over there. He He's doing this in 4x3 today, I believe. Sometimes he's done things in 16x9. The only, the only risk is if you're using content from other people and say you're doing a wide screen format, their content may be in a standard screen format and sometimes it distorts. So there's, there's some things you gotta think about there. Any other questions? Oh, that's a good old question. She wants to know like RPDX monetizing. does. Yeah, she wants to know how we're monetizing our podcast. And uh, in the past, we didn't really worry about it, but it has taken so much of our time and energy and uh, finances that we are now starting to work on how to monetize. Uh, but the two ways that I've seen people do it are the paper content, where you have some free material, but then in order to get the free material, people have to pay to get it uh, early or to get it at all, and the other way is the sponsorship. But then you have the, you know, you run the, oh, I have commercials, you like them, so. So, a very direct answer right now. Um, you know, this started out as free content, and I think it will always remain free content, it's a lost leader, but consulting. So, you know, over time, you build up a lot of technical expertise and you can move that technical expertise into consulting. I know another podcaster who is who has built their business model based on that. So, yes, you can do um, you can do uh, specific uh, projects or specific podcasts for monetization, you know, purposes. But um, you know, are there clients out there? Are there people who want to start a podcast? and want to use your expertise to do it. We, we have some projects right now that we're working on that will be paid for um, by clients' projects. I think we have time for one more question before Aaron has a few words to say to you. Does anyone else have anything? Uh, how much prep time do you usually get to a program? He wants to know how much prep time we normally give to a program, and that's like a double-headed Beast because we each have our own individual prep. I uh, book the shows and then I do maybe four or five hours of research on the guests that I'm going to have on the show, and then you know I do my hair and makeup. And the Doctor Normal. Oh, well that's during the show. I make drinks for the guests, and that takes a little bit of time. Apparently, how many of you have been on the show and had the drinks? Oh hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, my drinks are, are well known. And Doctor Normal. Um, th this is a good question. Part of the working hard and pushing out something regularly is to get the kind of setup that's easy for you to set up and, you know, I call it the push the record button and go and publish. So part of the tech that, that you want to explore is that it, it's, we could have probably put up a slide in here with Curve that says when you start this, you're going to have this big curve where you're spending all your time just getting the tech together and getting the process together. And um, I need this light here, or I have got to plug something in, or, or something's wrong with my audio. Once you figure that out, you then, your second phase is to make it as efficient as possible. Okay, now I'm doing all this, and I'm, I'm spending hours and hours producing this podcast. I've got it down. Now what do I do to turn that into an hour or two of prep? So it's kind of bring on new capabilities, get set up, make it efficient, and drop the time, uh, drop the production time down. And then as soon as you've got that efficient, then what you'll do is you'll turn around and you'll increase your capabilities uh, tenfold again, 
and you'll be spending those extra hours doing that, uh, especially making when we made the transition from audio to video. That was really, really a big, big thing in doing live streaming. So. I know it's at least one other question, but I need to hand this over to Aaron. So if you did have a question for us, we'll be here for the rest of the day. You can just you know, hunt us down and ask. And here's Aaron. 